Hi and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. This is Steve and in this video we're going to talk about the most important Photoshop shortcuts. This is an exciting one for me because I'm always talking about shortcuts but I haven't done one where I condense them all into one video. And obviously you could spend days or weeks or years doing different shortcuts but these are my favorites. The ones that I use all the time. So now that I'm done with that rambling introduction, let's dive right in. Number one. And this is actually more than just one, but they basically kind of all fit together. And that is the tools. The tools all have their own shortcuts. And if you have these tool tips turned on, it'll tell you what they are. So my three favorite ones are the move tool, which is V, the brush tool, which is B, and the crop tool, which is C. And that's really straightforward, but the other ones are pretty straightforward too. The lasso tool is L, one of them that's not so straightforward is the quick selection tool, which is W. And keep in mind too, if I right click on these, there are three selection tools hidden within here and they're all W. So what's the secret to getting to say the magic wand tool? Well, let me show you. Let me click off of that and I'll show you. So I hit the W key and that brings me to the quick selection tool. If I hit shift and W, then it toggles through those three tools. So I go from the magic wand tool, I'm sorry, I go from the quick selection tool, I hit shift W, I go to the magic wand tool, and I hit shift W again, and I go to the object selection tool, and then one more time and I'm back, okay? So with the, that's the same with any of these where they have multiple things in there. They're all gonna be the same shortcut key. So same with this one, I go shift C, 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 and I cycle through those tools. I go shift B, 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 and I cycle through those tools, okay? That's number one. I know that's like 500 keystrokes all crammed into one tip, but it's important. Okay, number two is the most obvious one, but just in case you don't know it, control Z. So if I go down here and I create a new layer of a solid color, and I click OK, and I don't like it, then I can just hit Control-Z, and it goes away. But on some versions, if you hit Control-Z several times, basically it'll undo, and then it'll redo, and then it'll undo, and then it'll redo. So you won't really get anywhere. With those versions, you'll have to actually hit Control-Alt-Z to keep undoing. Now in the version that I have, you just can hit Control-Z and keep control z -ing back until you've destroyed your image or until you've gone back to your original. You can also redo things in a lot of things like Word, you hit Control Y, but that doesn't work with Photoshop. That actually does something else. What you have to do is hit Control Shift Z and that redoes things. So you can just keep cruising through that until you get to where you want and then you go, oops, I went too far and then you go Control Z to go back. But in older versions, I think it's still set up that if you want to keep going backwards, stepping back, you have to get Control-Alt-Z. Okay, that's number two. Number three is the T key. And this does two things that are awesome. The first thing it does is gives you the text tool. So you hit the T key and it gives you the text tool. That's pretty straightforward. The other thing you can do is if you hit Control and T, that's the transform tool, which is be way better than going up here to edit and going to the transform tool down here. If you just hit control T, that gives you the transform tool. And then you can reshape and resize things as you wish. That's control T. Number four, speaking of transforming, is the shift key. And the place where this is really helpful is when you do control T and you're in the transform tool, some versions of Photoshop, like the newest version that I have, you click on the corner and you just start to drag and the proportions will stay consistent, constrained, right? They're locked to each other. In older versions, that won't happen. But what if you want these not to stay constrained? In my case, you're gonna hit shift and then click and that allows you to stretch it in different directions like that. But in older versions, you actually have to hit the shift key to constrain the proportions like that. So it depends on which version you have, but it's good to get familiar with holding the shift key or not holding the shift key, depending on how you want a layer to behave when you transform it. 
Okay, I'm gonna undo that again. And here I'm gonna throw in a bonus one so I can scroll in here. If you hit Alt and scroll, that allows you to scroll in or zoom in. You can also do Alt scroll to zoom out. And then for number five, the way that you move the screen once you're here, rather than going down to these scroll bars and using them, is to hit the space bar. That gives you the hand tool and you can then grab it and drag it around. So you can grab and toss like that and it'll move fast, or you can also just grab it and hold it like that. And speaking of the shift keys and space bar keys, when you are drawing a shape, like an ellipse, right? I'm gonna hit the U key. That's gonna give me an ellipse. When I start to draw that ellipse, it's kind of free form, it's kind of loosey-goosey. I can create a really stretched out ellipse in either direction. If I use the shift key, it's going to snap it to a circle and it's gonna constrain it to a circle. And as I go each direction, it's going to make that circle bigger or smaller. In addition, let's get it bigger. If I hit the space bar, I can now move that around without resizing it. If I wanna, for instance, kind of get close to this shape, I can do that with the space bar. If I want to still make it bigger, then I release the space bar, pull a little bit more, and then grab the space bar again to move it. And if I want to change the shape of it again, I release both keys. Now I can stretch it into an oval to get it to the size I want. Grab the space bar key again to move it. And then just kind of work back and forth until you get your ellipse to the right shape. And when you're done, you release. Control Z to get rid of that. The D key is next. When you're working with your color palette or your foreground and background colors, if you just hit the D key, you can reset them to their defaults, which is really handy. You can also switch these, this is a bonus tip, by hitting the X key. X key will switch your foreground and background colors. But the D key will reset everything back to black in the foreground, white in the background, every time, which is really nice. The other thing that D is good for is deselecting things. So if I have grabbed a selection tool and made a selection here and I've got the marching ants and I need to get rid of that, you hit Control D. This is not only important for just getting out of a selection, but it's also really important because sometimes you will have inadvertently selected something, but you'll be over here working and that selection is just off your screen. So here I am trying to work. Maybe I've got the brush tool out or some other tool and I'm trying to work, but it's not letting me because I have that selection made somewhere else that I can't see. So if I just hit the Control D, then I'll deselect that and then I can get back to using whatever tool I want to use. So if you ever just have a tool that's not working, it's always a good idea to just hit Control D to make sure you don't have an active selection. And I would say about 70% of the time it fixes the problem. And while we're talking about selections, I should probably throw in Control A. That selects the whole everything, it selects your whole image. And then of course Control D to get rid of that. Okay, one of my favorites is Control J. When you're in a layer, you can right click to duplicate the layer, or you can just hit Control J and that'll make a copy and then it will name it. Whatever the name was plus the word copy. Okay, you can control Z to undo that. Control J is a great one. And you should get in the habit when you have a, an image that just has a background layer, just go, when you open it up at first, click on it and hit Control J, make a copy, and that way you're just in the habit of working non-destructively. Very good habit. Okay, let's talk about your brush tool adjustments. This is a big one because if you use your brush tool a lot, like I do, then you need to be able to change the size and hardness and all that stuff quickly. So you hit the B key for the brush tool. One shortcut is to use the square brackets to make it bigger, you hit the right square bracket. To make it smaller, you hit the left square bracket. But maybe an even better one is to hit the Alt key and then right click. It's kind of weird. Alt and then right click on the mouse. It brings up this weird little red dot. 
And if you push up on your mouse, it softens the brush all the way to zero. If you push down on your mouse, it hardens the brush. If you push to the right, it makes the brush bigger. If you push to the left, it makes the brush smaller. And this way you have complete control over how you adjust the size and hardness of your brush with just one key, the Alt key, well, that would be Option on your Mac, of course, and the right mouse button. So that's a good one. And then once you've selected the size that you want, you release and you can change the opacity, right? The opacity is here. You can click and drag here if you want, or you can just hit keys on your keyboard. If you want 10%, hit one. If you want 20%, hit two, and so on, all the way up until if you want to get to 100% again, you hit zero. Alternately, if you want to adjust the flow, you do the same thing, but you add the shift key. So you go shift two, that makes your flow 20%. Shift zero makes your flow 100%. Okay, so that's the brain dump of Photoshop keyboard shortcuts. I hope you found at least a couple in there that were valuable and that you didn't know before. If you did, please hit like on the video. If you want to get more videos, hit subscribe. And if you want to learn even more, check out my full course on Udemy. The link is in the description below the video, and I would love to teach you more. Thanks for playing with Photoshop with me.